I built a hospital, I would have a fairy garden, but the fairy garden wouldn't have just have little toy fairy. They would have real fairies, and then there would be like slides in the in the waiting room as well. If I built a hospital, I'd like it to be in like a really nice green forest full of wildlife, and the benches were like made out of logs, and when you needed to go into the waiting room, you went out into this big forest. I would have some chocolate and what? Some marshmallows. Patients are coming up to the hospital dozens and dozens of times for appointments and for treatment. It's really important that they've got a nice environment to come to. There's more evidence coming through now that the environment influences how well people do with their cancer treatment. At the moment, uh, in our hospital and in our cancer unit, um, we've got access to all the latest treatments and all the latest trials, but unfortunately the environment doesn't really match up to that. Patients coming into hospital are, are um, whether you like it or not, are on a journey, and for cancer patients, that journey can last for 20 years now. Uh, and what they expect is um, to be looked after, and they expect to be looked after in an environment that they become familiar with. Um, and the thing that has struck me greatly about working with patients is how much they associate their care with the building. I'd assumed that they would associate their care with the people in the building. Not true. And I think we need to not ignore that, and I think we need to create that that it's a place that you come to that you associate with getting better. The journey may be a difficult one, but the people that you're with may change. But the place is the one thing that stays the same. And I think that's really important. And in order to create that, we need to be really clear about the way that the environment plays a role in that. It was very obvious, really, very quickly, what the quality of the space was that we developed together. And of course, we had parents moving with us who would spent some time on the old unit and were now experiencing the new unit and to them the stark difference was amazing and the sentiments they expressed were, were fantastic. I remember also talking to the team and how it really felt as if where we'd got to on that day were not only represented by the building but in a sense an investment in us. feeling very mixed emotions, um, hoping for the best, preparing for the worst. Just like a slap in the chest, and fear. Being given a diagnosis that said six to 18 months, knowing that I was already two months down that journey. Coldness, those, that's the main thing that I can say, coldness and loneliness. When I left the room, having been given my diagnosis, um, I sat on a corridor um, in a very public space. Um, with people going past me. It was just huge, impersonal. We sat on a corridor with a grey wall and the one thing I'm going to do is make sure there's pictures in the new place. This is what this building should do, is actually breathe life into people. It's like, can you live without colour? And I think not. If I could give this building anything, it would be constant sunshine. And I think there are other ways of doing it than getting the sun to shine in.
day they open the centre will be an amazing day. It will mean that my family will go and be part of that opening. They'll have the opportunity to remember all the good times that we had raising funds and being part of this community. Though I might not be here, it is important that they understand that they have somewhere that they can go to that can support them as a family unit, even when I'm no longer a patient here. When you enter the cancer unit in the future, the bit of Justine that you'll see there is a large painting. It's a painting that's bright. It's a painting that gives you and inspires you to keep going. A painting that will inspire you to fight the fight, but also laugh along the way.